a lot of people that were watching me for photography stuff have uh, completely forgotten that I've made countless hundreds of videos on field theory and that I've uh, written books and articles on field theory and uh, actually I'm an expert on field theory um, you actually have to go to the original field theorists like Faraday, Steinmetz, Heaviside, Nikola Tesla to uh, get to the heart of it. Everything now has been superseded by uh, quantum insanity which is based in specifically atomism the reification of space as something that acts upon other things was called a, uh, an insanity, a uh, harebrained scheme, as uh, said by Nikola Tesla in reference to Einstein. The reification of space is no different than the reification of a shadow. A shadow is a privation, i.e. a privation of light. We cannot say that a privation acts upon other things. While we can uh, reify the notion or the premise that uh, sitting in a shadow will cause you to get cold, this does not mean that a shadow is a principle, it's a posterior attribute, it's actually a privation. Space is certainly no different. The uh, reification of gravity as an autonomous field modality, specifically, which is what this video is about, is absolutely impossible based upon everything we know, and most people don't look into the greats of electrical field theory, i.e., Faraday, Steinmetz, Oliver Heaviside, Nikola Tesla. These are the people that gave us 100% of our electrical grid today and 99% of our understanding of field theory. However, none of these people actually explained what gravity was. It's often, of course, usually always described as a, a force. Yeah, once in a while you'll actually find an intelligent person that says that gravity is not a force, it's merely an acceleration, but uh, the four Maxwellian field equations never define what a field is. A field, there's only one field ultimately, and that is a divergent field. And that would be a Cartesian field, but we can only define a field, and we've never defined a field, science never has anyway. I have in my book, I'm right now into the fourth edition, um, all field modalities, i.e. Uh, the uh, four Maxwellian field equations, define a field over a period of time with a given vector, with a, uh, a resultant effect, but that doesn't define a field. If we can only define Bob by what Bob does or how he affects things or how far he travels, that doesn't define what Bob is. To give reification to the notion that gravity is an autonomous field modality is as insane as a stupid little ignorant child that thinks that water is one thing, steam is another thing, and ice is another thing. And of course we know all of these are just different modalities of water, of the hydrous oxide molecule, correct? So, what about gravity? By the way, I'd have you reference a uh, odd little paper you can actually find it free for download. It's called A Gravitational Electromagnetic Analogy by Oliver Heaviside, written in the early part of this century, often quoted by the now late Oleg D. Jefeminko, uh, who references it for an entire huge book. Um, he actually denied himself, and he has uh, two PhDs, uh, not that that's important at all, Dr. Oleg D. Jefeminko, in his book, uh, and I have it, it's called uh, Causality, Electromagnetic Induction and Gravitation. He also has another book on this subject called Gravitation and Co-Gravitation, specifically that gravity is electromagnetic by its very nature. There is no autonomous fuel modality that we know as gravity. Gravity, of course, is not a force. There is only two principles in nature, force and motion, inertia and acceleration. We have centrifugal divergence and we have centripetal convergence. Everything is governed by capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. There is no force involved if you were, say, at a uh, known distance uh, from the surface of the Earth to let go of something. No force is involved in that object being let go that it would accelerate uh, towards the Earth. Of course, resultantly, however, um, quite minuscule, the Earth would also accelerate towards that object. They're mutually accelerant, but obviously the Earth is not going to move in response to, say, a five-pound bowling ball, for example. But gravity is not an acceleration, but gravity is not a force, excuse me, but gravity as an acceleration, we actually have to define what that acceleration is. The two principles, and the one thing that uh, Eric Dollard got uh, right in all of his understanding of field theory, and I used to talk to him quite a bit on the phone, he's sick now, he doesn't have time to talk to anybody, but the one most important thing that he said is that you can't even understand electrical theory without understanding counter space. <sighs> what about counter space? I mean, a field has a Cartesian footprint. When we talk about a toroidal divergent force vector, we're talking about something that has a Cartesian value over a period of time with a resultant effect. But gravity 
has no Cartesian footprint, there is no xy coordinate by which we could actually map if we refer to something, i.e. gravity, which is acceleration, but it is not even a field, nor is it a force, obviously so, but it is also not an autonomous field modality. So we have to make three absolutist statements from the perspective of, uh, of um, platonic retroduction that gravity is not a force, uh, gravity has no Cartesian locus, and uh, thirdly, I think about a thousand things at once, I'll get back to it. Gravity has a zero locus from which all else accelerates, so if gravity has no Cartesian footprint, and it's certainly not a force, and it's certainly not an autonomous field modality, we only understand gravity through our limited human intellectual comprehension of what we experience, and we would reify water as one thing, like a child, and... Uh, and uh, steam is another, and ice is another thing. And we know all of these things are one and one thing only, and that would be water. Um, specifically, there's only one field modality in the universe, and that would be magnetic. The other uh, field modality would be a hybrid, which would be electromagnetic, but uh, uh, electromagnetism, by definition, is a coaxial circuit. Electricity is phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification, meaning specific that electricity is a hybrid between dielectricity and that of magnetism. So even electricity is merely a hybrid reification of the coaxial circuit that we know of. We have transverse, uh, whether it's circular linear polarization, transverse electrical and magnetic, and longitudinal pulse perturbations, i.e. the dielectric. This would be rarefactions and compressions in the ether. Therefore, electricity is also not an autonomous field modality. And if we eliminate out gravity, which of course is not a field modality, and we understand what electricity certainly is, and this is quantifiable, Planck's constant, phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification, electricity is magnetism and dielectricity, then we are only left with one thing. The only field modality that has a Cartesian coordinate exists either as itself or as a hybrid. That would be magnetism and electricity. Electricity is existent as a hybrid with dielectricity and of magnetism. So where a large mass has magnetic uh, coherency, for example, or incommensurability, acceleration overthrows in the case of, now we know for a fact, when we refer to black holes, we know that these entities exist, but black holes are certainly a misnomer. They're certainly not black and they're certainly not holes. But what if we can imagine and stretch your imagination, and it requires no stretch of imagination, it's actually hyperlogical, that we actually have the, the, uh, the case where uh, a supermassive, uh, we know as the stars burn out, so the one thing that they're left uh, trying to burn is iron. And here we have a ferrous object that undergoes coherency. And once we have coherency set up, which cannot be set up in uh, either hydrogen or helium or any of the elements leading up to iron, we know that these supermassive entities, once they reach a state of supermassive iron, they undergo coherency. Coherency is not additive, it is multiplicative. What does that mean specifically? Well, do you know the difference between a 5-watt light bulb and a 5-watt laser? A 5-watt laser is multiplicatively more potent than a 5-watt light bulb. Both have the same input, so what is the attributional difference between a 5-watt light bulb and a 5-watt laser? Do you know the difference? A 5-watt light bulb is absolutely useless even to read a book by, but a 5-watt laser will scorch out the back of your retinas and will burn a hole right through your damn skin. Both of these are 5 watts, so what is the attributional um, nature of a laser, for example, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, right? Well, that's a description, that's not an explanation. Do we know what incommensurability and coherency is? Most people don't even know what the word incommensurability is, but what about coherency? You think you know what coherency is, well, it refers to coherent light. But that's merely a description. Again, what is it in explanation that actually defines coherency such that it is multiplicative? The only thing that defines a magnet before it becomes a magnet is merely an attribute. The neodymium iron boron lump in the case of like a supermagnet before it is magnetized, the only differentiation is not quantitative. It is exactly identical in quantitative value before it becomes a magnet and after it becomes. So what gives it the denotation of a magnet after it's been magnetized? Once we have polarity, we have incommensurability, we have coherency. Before that, it is just a lump of ceramic, neodymium iron boron slug. 
once it, uh, excuse me, before it becomes the magnet, once it actually becomes the magnet, we actually have field coherency, where if we have two of these objects in close proximity, they'll actually smash your finger and break your finger. So what if there's no difference in the quantitative nature between these two entities, then what is it of the attribution or qualitative nature that defines what we call the magnet? Gravity is merely incoherent dielectric acceleration. We do not have incommensurability nor coherency set up in, say, any mass, the moon, the earth, or any other large object, or any mass in general. Inorganic matter, organic matter, all of these things have magnetic fields. We have toroidal magnetic divergences, which actually set up in molecular constructs both biological and non-biological, but what gives definition to the magnet? What gives definition to the entity, for example, on the larger scale we call black hole? We have a supermassive entity, and this is where you're going to have to wrap your mind around something that's hyperlogical, but which you've never thought of before, something that has uh, enormous um, a mass but has no magnitude. This would be the case for acceleration in this supermass which actually has field coherency, overthrows the divergent force vectors which give definition to the magnitude of the volume itself. So can you imagine something that's incredibly massive? Here we have the case of a super large entity of a dying or diet dead star who's burned everything up other than iron and which has set up field coherency. Now it is like a super giant magnet. Now it's mutual acceleration at a zero null vector at the center of which is so high that we actually have a mass. We have something that's super massive but has absolutely no magnitude. That's like saying something is super huge yet it is so accelerative that its acceleration vector is so strong that it overthrows its ability to maintain a magnitudinal footprint in a Cartesian universe of volume and magnitude. That is no stretch of the imagination. It is hyperlogical, it is platonic, and it is retroductive. This would be the case of the black hole. What do we understand about multiplicative values and coherency? Well, you need to wrap your mind around something as simple as a 5-watt light bulb, which is useless to anybody. I don't think you could buy a 5-watt light bulb versus a 5-watt laser, which is insanely dangerous. I actually happen to have a couple of them. So what's the difference? They're both 5 watts. They have the exact same input. 5 watts of power. A watt is a known entity of power. What's the difference? One's a multiplicative. It's not additive. It's a multiplicative of the incoherent nature of another. Incoherent light versus coherent light. But do you really understand what that incommensurability or that coherency actually is? A field has a Cartesian footprint, but the only field that has a Cartesian footprint is either magnetism or a magnetism hybrid. That would be electromagnetism or electricity, which is magnetism and dielectricity. Gravity has only a zero locus. Gravity has no Cartesian footprint. At the center of any supermass, there is obviously no gravity. You could take the largest mass in the universe, the center of which obviously you would free float if you could go to the center of it, correct? So where is the center of gravity? Gravity has no center. It is the inverse of all Cartesian vectors. Thence with, logically so and retroductively so, it is illogical to say anything other than gravity is an acceleration towards counter space. This is irreducible and irrefutable by simplex platonic logic and retroduction. It is irrefutable. Nikola Tesla once said that there are a lot of deep thinkers out there. I forget his exact quote. So you can. Uh, think deeply and yet uh, not think clearly. So there's a lot of uh, deep thinkers that uh, are quite insane. You know, to think deeply and think clearly is certainly the rarest of things. There are a lot of deep thinkers out there with PhDs that write endless articles based in atomistic, illogical nonsense. Stuff that they were taught to teach others and they were taught to teach others and on and on. Just a gravy train of nonsense. Nikola Tesla was so right on that. This is the reason why Nikola Tesla called Einstein a fool, because Einstein tried to reify space, which has no properties, quote-unquote Nikola Tesla, as something that acts upon other things. Space has absolutely no properties. Space is absolutely no different than a shadow. A shadow is neither a principle nor does it have properties. Well, sure, it has properties. No, it doesn't. 
The true platonic definition of a shadow is merely the privation of light. It has no ability, it has no potency, it is purely impotent. Impotent in the sense of uh, pure uh, metaphysics. It is impotent to do anything or act upon anything. This is the logical reason why Nikola Tesla, who is a hardcore fan of Roger Boscovich, you can look him up on Google and read his book, it'll probably blow your mind, um, said that Einstein was a fool. He said that Einstein was a moron. Nikola Tesla was right. Einstein was wrong. You cannot reify space as something that acts upon other things. This is as stupid as saying shadows act upon other things. You know, a common fool would take that in the truest sense, where if you sit in a shadow, you're going to be cold, so shadows do act upon things. Shadow is something. A shadow is certainly so a noun if we actually adhere to this, the hardest letter of the law and apply pure platonic retroduction to the definition of a shadow. Well, it is a noun, and a shadow is uh, not a principle. It's not a thing in itself. It has no essa, as uh, Hegel would say. It has no essence. Coherency is multiplicative. It is certainly not additive. The concept of gravity being different than magnetism is due to the incoherent nature by which normal matter, rock, earth, water, etc., is mutually accelerative. The only thing that defines magnetism, just like a laser, is field coherency. Gravity is incoherent dielectric acceleration, or what the common moron refers to as magnetic attraction. But there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Magne magnetism, by definition, is the only field that there is, because the only field, by hardcore platonic definition, has a Cartesian footprint, a Cartesian value. All acceleration, dielectric acceleration, or what we call gravity, has absolutely no Cartesian footprint. It has a zero net locus. It is has its basis in counter space. The center of any gravity, or the center of any large mass, there is no gravity. The implication of which is that gravity has no locus. There are many things that actually give that definition, that gravity has no locus. Therefore, gravity is based in counter space. Gravity is not a force. Gravity is not a field, and gravity is not an autonomous field modality. I can literally make like a hundred videos going into the, the uh, specifics of gravity. I don't know if I would bore the pants off of people or not, or if I should just stick it in my book. I think I'm putting people to sleep about five minutes into this video. At least that's what I'm speculating. Some people love it, most people just roll their eyes in the back of their head. It's like if it doesn't get them rich or famous, you know, why even study it? Wisdom is its own reward. That was something that was never taught to you in school or college. They should have taught it to you, but they never taught it to you because education doesn't exist anymore. Everybody today is a dumbass trying to get rich and laid. What we call gravity is merely an acceler acceleration to counter space, a dissipation of force divergence. Um, when energy is exhausted, the plane falls to the earth, correct? If you were to pierce the fuel tank of a jet or whatnot, you know, it will have a glide path to Earth, but I mean, if you take the wings off and empty all the fuel instantly, it's going to accelerate towards the Earth. The only thing that counteracts gravity, and here we're talking about anti-gravity, is a force divergent. But in the case of gravity, since it is incoherent, we actually have to have a specific geometrical force to counteract the acceleration of gravity. But we're not talking about anti-gravity in this video. But gravity itself does not exist. When we speak of gravity, we're speaking about incoherent dielectric acceleration. Basically, incoherent magnetic attraction. In the hardcore, super layman, extra lame, extra stupid version of, uh, of uh, unintelligent humanity, which talks about magnetic attraction, gravity is incoherent magnetic attraction. Magnetism by denotation and definition, is only coherent and incommensurable acceleration. But that's a matter for another video and many other videos. I hope you like this video. Suffering from the flu, you can always click the link below, make a small donation. You can tell me to jump off a cliff or jump in a deep bottomless pit, whatever makes you happy. Catch you later. Bye.